Hey everyone. Today we will discuss free energy functions. Actually in our previous session we saw that for a spontaneous process delta s universe should be greater than 0 that is the change in entropy for a universe should be greater than 0. While this is a useful criterion for determining whether or not a process is spontaneous but it is difficult as it requires one to calculate not only the entropy change for a system but also that for a surrounding so sustathine matram depend cheyina oru function introduce edu kanyal it will be more convenient to do the job for this processes imposing constraints upon the system are considered the constraints being constant temperature and volume or constant temperature and pressure in this regard we have introduced two functions helmholtz free energy represented by the upper case a and gibbs free energy represented by the upper case g in this session we will more look into the helmholtz free energy or work function and its physical significance the work function or helmholtz free energy or simply helmholtz energy of a system is defined as upper case a is equal to u minus ts where a represents the helmholtz free energy or work function and u is the internal energy of the system s is the entropy and t is the temperature measured in kelvin scale since internal energy entropy and temperature are state functions obviously the helmholtz free energy is also a state function consider a process in which the system passes from state 1 to state 2 at constant temperature and also at constant volume at constant volume means there will be no expansion work if a1 u1 and s1 represent respectively the helmholtz free energy internal energy and entropy of the system in its initial state that is state 1 and if a2 u2 s2 represents the corresponding values of the system in its final state then the helmholtz free energy change is given by a2 minus a1 helmholtz energy of final minus initial so this will be equal to u2 minus ts2 minus u1 minus ts1 on rearranging we will get u2 minus u1 minus t into s2 minus s1 that is delta u minus t delta s which is equal to delta a so finally we have this expression which represents the helmholtz free energy change as delta u minus t delta s then what is the physical significance of helmholtz energy we know that for a reversible process delta s is equal to q reversible by t and we get t delta s is equal to q reversible and we have this expression delta a is equal to delta u minus t delta s when we substitute the t delta s with q reversible we will get delta a is equal to delta u minus q reversible and according to first law of thermodynamics we know delta u is equal to w plus q from here we get w is equal to delta u minus q reversible and we have delta a is equal to delta u minus q reversible when we substitute this with we get delta a is equal to w reversible if w reversible is negative that is if work done by the system then delta a will also be negative 
so it follows that for an isothermal reversible process the decrease in helmholtz energy is equal to the maximum work done by the system on the surroundings simply we can say delta a is the part of the change in internal energy that is delta u that is free for use to do work helmholtz free energy possesses an alternative name the work function so this is a physical significance of helmholtz free energy